Asar Center per se does not have anything <coughs> against government schools. And in the recent Asar report, uh, there's a paper by Dr. Vilima Varpa where she explicitly uh, uh, states that when we take into account the household factors in a regression framework, the uh, home advantage, I mean the private school advantage disappears. So it is the home uh, home factor that is accounting for why children in private schools are doing better. The, okay, the second thing is that we don't have Asar for the forthcoming year, so one year of, I guess, break from bad news. No huh? January. Sorry? No, January 15th report. No, no, January uh, 2016 report. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me just start by stating the origins of the uh, other data. So in uh, in 2004, when the UPA government was formed, it uh, it made a uh, policy decision to focus on outcomes rather than outlays. And it was during this year that they also decided to levy a 2% education uh, sales. So uh, what we uh, what we at Pratham knew that and already what was available in the literature is that enrollment India is close to achieving 10% in, uh, enrollment at the primary level. But the bigger question was are children learning at school? And uh, and Pratham's experience suggested that children may be, children are going to school but they are not learning. But there was no evidence up, uh, at scale which would uh, back up our understanding of what was happening on the ground. So that is where Asar uh, started. Now, uh, Asar, the way it is structured, and by the way, I have this, present, uh, this Asar website only because I don't have a presentation, so just to add some color. So uh, Asar survey, it has some uh, uh, features which I think it makes it uh, particularly relevant for the Indian context. So one, it is a household survey and not a school survey. The reason for that is that even with universal enrollment, there is dropout and there is never enrollment. Second, uh, there is the problem of absenteeism. So we, uh, uh, it's not, if when, you are, when we are do, doing a survey in the school, there may be children who you do not capture because they are not present in school uh, that day. But if you go to the household, you will be able to capture, uh, capture those children. That is why we do a uh, household survey. And, um, and it also allows us to uh, capture a bunch of household factors that we think also affect the learning outcomes of children. Uh, the second feature of Asar uh, surveys is that it is not a pen and paper test. The reason we do not focus on a pen and paper test is that there are many children in India who, as, who, as our surveys in, indicate, do not know how to read. So if we were to give a pen and paper test, we will not be able to capture this reading crisis in India. So that is why we administer an oral test. Uh, and this is also something that is uh, different from usual assessment uh, testing models. Yeah. Good question on the math. So for math, you need a pen paper, right? Yeah, so but we start. Uh, so the first is, uh, child is asked to identify a two-digit number. So we start with a two-digit number. If the child identifies the number, then we ask him or her to solve a math. Simple uh, Yeah, then you move to a division problem. Yeah. Now, um, the other key feature of the Asar uh, survey is that it is a citizen-led survey in the sense that we, um, uh, every year, uh, volunteers from, uh, from uh, across the country, they contribute, uh, they participate in the survey and we do not, uh, we just reimburse their uh, uh, travel and lodging costs, we do not provide them any additional uh, remuneration. So it is a citizen-led survey. and. Uh, uh, so far the data, like in India, everything you do at scale will be paid. So Asar is the largest household survey in India. And uh, every year we cover around 7 lakh children over 50, around in around 15,000 villages. The last, but it's not, not the least, it is a quick and easy measurement of the state of education in India that is not only uh, accessible to a body of education experts, but it can be also understood by by parents and teachers and even by school children. And I will come back to this point uh, later in the survey to see how, uh, when, when I talk about other impact. Okay. So, um, um. you mentioned that it's a volunteer. Yeah. So, are they giving some sort of training before? Yes, we do a rigorous training. So, seven day rigorous training. Uh, that uh, that uh, people from Delhi go and train the state teams, and it, it, it is a. Uh, I mean, uh, the Asar survey process is very is one of the rigorous processes, survey processes in India. Another question. Hmm. 
So on what basis does a family get to be surveyed? It's okay, so there is sampling is. Uh, so the sampling, so we use a PPS to select the villages. With a, once we go to the villages, when, uh, uh, a 20, 20 households are selected at random. Uh, so uh, just to recount the other uh, results, so we know that uh, India has universal uh, enrollment. What other data highlights is that many children pass through the educational system without the functional skills of writing and doing basic arithmetic problems. So, uh, in case just to recap, so in 2014, only a fourth of children in uh, fourth of uh, children in standard three can uh, could read a standard two text, and in standard five, that proportion was close to half. But uh, in standard eight, um, we still find that about 25 percent children could not read standard two text. Now, as far as arithmetic goes, we have about we found that about a quarter of standard three children in 2014 could not do a two-digit subtraction. And, uh, about a sta and about a quarter of standard five children could not do division. Okay, so in terms of policy impact, so uh, ASAR is uh, released on January on every year uh, with a reason. One, this is during the time when the budget gets prepared. So we hope that uh, the ASAR findings has an impact on, on the central budget. And second, this is also the time when the annual work plans for elementary education are finalized. So it, it is with this uh, uh, with this uh, thing in mind that we uh, we release it on January 15 every year, and um, the uh, as a process begins roughly in uh, August every year, and we finish it by uh, November, and one month we keep for all the data analysis. Now, in terms of policy impact, uh, we have had I mean other findings are have been cited in the economic surveys. The 12th uh, five-year plan uh, also mentions as a service, and then they, uh, and the service Shiksha Abhiyan also ha also has a line item. I mean, it was introduced some, uh, uh, around 10 years ago, uh, where it was uh, where it focused on enhancing learning uh, achievements in primary grades. So, if I were to talk about the policy impact of ASAR, I would say that um, the ASAR surveys, along with the other surveys done by the government, has focus has. Uh, Move the focus from enrollment to quality education. So that would be our biggest uh, policy impact. Now, in terms of the non-policy impact, I would like to. Um, uh, I mean, recently we had this bunch of kids in Silampur in uh, Delhi who conducted their own ASA survey. So these children who were studying in in, in a school in Silampur did the ASA uh, ASA uh, tool. They conducted. They went. To, uh, to different houses in Silampur. They conducted their own survey, then they had a panel discussion where they invited us and uh, teachers and other, uh, other members of the community to present their findings and discuss what could be done to improve the situation. So that is it. I mean, when I talk of citizen-led assessment, so this is the kind of ownership that we aim for. I mean, the kind of participation and accountability we aim for when we were doing the assert, uh, when we do the assert survey. So this is one of our, you know, uh, I would say, big achievements. The, um, the other thing is that ASAR model has been, uh, uh, I mean, other countries have also shown an interest in ASAR model. Uh, as of now, ASAR uh, ASAR like uh, like surveys have been done in Pakistan, uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Mali, and recently Senegal. Uh, Mexico is also piloting a sort uh, 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 an a sort kind of a model. So that has been a non sort of a non policy uh, impact. Now in terms of sharing ASA data, so uh, it, uh, so the ASA raw data is not in public domain, but ASA district estimates are and divisional estimates are available online. The reason we do not make raw data. Okay. The reason we do not make ASA data. Uh, uh, available publicly is because ASAR, um, ASAR is funded by voluntary contribution and when people come to us uh, come to us to ask for data we do make uh, we do uh, uh, ask them if it is possible for them to contribute towards uh, the survey so that is our only one way of ensuring that uh, at least some people can contribute if some people can contribute towards the survey we ask them you know can you contribute and uh, but we have never ever denied uh, uh, micro data to anyone because they could not contribute to as a survey. The second is that um, 
uh, there, um, there is a need for a certain degree of statistical expertise to handle as data and uh, if it were to make if, if we were to make it publicly available then uh, as a center gets inundated with data queries about how to handle this variable how to handle that variable so we want to ensure at least some degree of um, control in terms of uh, in terms of whom we are giving the data so that so that the work reduces at our end